Brain of Britain, the nationwide general knowledge contest, chaired by Russell Davis. Hello. It feels strange to be holding the exciting climax of our 2020 season behind closed doors, but the final it is, and COVID restrictions apply no less stringently. A very warm welcome to the somewhat echoey BBC Radio Theatre, which in other years would positively bristle with excited audience members eager to see who becomes the Brain of Britain champion. I'm sure it's no less tense for our four socially distanced finalists who've come through heats and semi-finals to get here. And some of those contests have been very close, so well done all of you on making it this far. Let's meet our finalists one more time. Hello, I'm Graham Anderson. I'm a retired HR director from Five Oak Green in Kent. Hello, I'm Graham Barker. I'm a retired dental surgeon from Merseyside. Hello, I'm Hugh Brady, a scientist from North London. Hello, I'm Michael Smith. I sell mare's milk and I live in Chiswick. And you're all very welcome back. And I don't need to tell you, we wish you all the very best of luck. A lot of the talk after these shows is about luck, how it happens or doesn't happen. The rules haven't changed. I ask you your questions in alphabetical surname order. And you all have a button which flashes a light at me to tell me you'd like to try for a bonus, if I open up the question. Fingers poised, the final begins with you, Graham Anderson. The German chemist Christian Friedrich Schönbein discovered what allotrope of oxygen in 1840? Ozone? Yes, he did. Matthew Brady and Alexander Gardner were among the pioneering photographers whose pictures are a valuable document of which 19th century war? Crimean? No. Hugh Brady? American Civil War. The American Civil War is the right answer, yes. Graham Barker, your question. For which British writer was a type of omelette created at the Savoy Hotel in London, incorporating smoked haddock, Parmesan cheese and cream? Arnold Bennett. Yes, 1867 to 1931. The notorious RBG was an affectionate nickname given to the late Associate Justice of the US Supreme Court, who died in September 2020. What do those initials stand for? Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Yes. Actually, she was Joan Ruth Bader Ginsburg in full, but you're right. Which English monarch's personal motto was loyalty me lie, meaning loyalty binds me? Charles I? No. Graham Anderson? Edward III? No. E Michael Smith? Henry III? No. All good guesses. Hugh Brady? Henry VIII. No, it was Richard III, which he may not have lived up to, depending on whether you take Shakespeare's view of him or something slightly kinder. Hugh Brady's question, which number one hit song of 1975 returned to the British charts a year later and only just missed out on reach reaching number one all over again, following its use in a BBC documentary series about the Royal Navy? Sailing by Rod, Rod Stewart. Stewart, yes, it had to be, didn't it? Who was the first female cricketer to hit a six in a test match? Rachel Hayhoe Flint. Yes, you're right, at the Oval against Australia in 1963. The Guggenheim Museum, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, and the Museum of Modern Art are three of Manhattan's so-called Big Four art museums. Which museum, founded in 1930, completes this quartet? The Whitney? The Whitney Museum of American Art, yes. If you suffered from macroglossia, which part of your body would be abnormally large? Your tongue. Your tongue is right. What word did Moray Maverick, a descendant of the famous cattleman Samuel Maverick, invent to describe pretentious and long-winded language used by bureaucrats? Highfalutin. No. Graham Anderson. Gobbledygook. Gobbledygook, yes. He first used it in 1944 during the Second World War. He was a Democrat politician, rather an eccentric one, from <clears throat> Texas. And now it's Michael Smith's question. The 2020 BBC drama series, The Trial of Christine Keeler, starred Sophie Cookson in the title role as the young woman whose liaison with the cabinet minister, John Profumo, rocked the government in the 1960s. Which actress played Christine Keeler in the 1989 film, Scandal, on the same subject? Ah, 
out of time now. Graham Anderson. Joanne Wally Kilmer. Yes, Joanne Wally, uh, billed as Joanne Wally Kilmer from 1988 to 1996, but you're right. The first round ends like this. Michael Smith yet to score. Graham Barker, two. Graham Anderson, three. Hugh Brady, five. And we go straight back to Graham Anderson. Helix pometia and Helix aspersa are the Latin names for edible species of which type of animal? Goat. No. Hugh Brady. Snail. Snail is right. Graham Barker. Which major figure in the post-war Labour Party was dismissed by an Irene Bevan as a desiccated calculating machine? Stafford Cripps? No. Michael Smith. Hugh Gateskull. Hugh Gateskull is right, yes. It, it must be said that a waterlogged calculating machine wouldn't be much use. But still, we go on to Hugh Brady's question. Which butterfly is the largest native to the UK? Monarch. Not the monarch. Uh, Graham Barker knows? The swallowtail. Yes, it is the swallowtail. You're much more likely to see it on the Norfolk Broads than elsewhere. Michael Smith now. Brian Faulkner, in office from 1971 to 2, was the last person to hold which office? Out of time, and Graham Barker. The Prime Minister of Northern Ireland. That's exactly the wording, yes. He later became Lord Faulkner of Downpatrick and died after an accident while riding to hounds in 1977. <coughs> End of round two. Michael Smith has one, Graham Anderson three, Graham Barker four, Hugh Brady six. And we return straight to Graham Anderson. You're going to hear the theme from a very popular TV show of the 1970s, a detective series with a New York setting. When we've heard it, can you tell me the name of the show? Jack? Yes, the series starring Telly Savalas in the title role. That was the original theme. They did change it somewhat later on. Which of George Eliot's title characters lives in 15th century Renaissance Florence? Daniel Deronda? No. Uh, Hugh Brady knows. Savranola? No. Any more offers? No, they're not. Romola is the answer, R-O-M-O-L-A. And now it's Graham Barker's question. At the end of the very first episode of Doctor Who, broadcast in 1963, the time travellers arrive in which period of Earth's history? The Stone Age? Yes, and over the next few episodes, the Doctor teaches cavemen the secret of fire. Which narrow strait links the Persian Gulf to the Gulf of Oman? Strait of Hormuz. That's the one. Between 2003 and 2019, only four names have been engraved on Wimbledon's Gentlemen's Singles Championship trophy. Federer, Djokovic, Nadal and Murray. Can you tell me who was the last person apart from those four to have his name on the trophy in 2002? Sampras? No. Graham Anderson? Courier? No. Hugh Brady? Ivanisevic? No. Michael Smith? Rafter? It wasn't. No. It was Leighton Hewitt who beat David Nalbandian in the final. And the fact that he did shouldn't be forgotten. I confess that I had, and so did we all. Hugh Brady, we come to you. What onomatopoeic term with two short identical syllables is used in South Africa and elsewhere to refer to a motorised rickshaw or taxi with three wheels? Tuk-tuk? 
Yes, it has that name in several parts of the world, including Thailand and Sri Lanka. Elsewhere, it's a tok-tok or an auto, and there used to be a common variant in India called the patpati. Um, in which city does the river Poddle flow? Cardiff. No. Michael Smith? Truro? No. Graham Barker? Dorchester? No. Yes, Graham Anderson? Bournemouth. No, it's Dublin. It joins the Liffey in the middle of the city. It does. Michael Smith, who, and I'd like both first and second names, please, was the voice of Lady Penelope in the 60s TV series Thunderbirds. Uh, no idea. Eartha Kitt. <laughs> no, might have been better, but I don't know. Graham Barker? Sylvia Anderson. Yes, the wife of co-creator Jerry Anderson. And that's the end of the third round with the scores like this. Michael Smith, one. Graham Anderson, four. Graham Barker, Hugh Brady, level pegging on seven. Now, let's pause the proceedings and give our finalists a chance to stretch those tense muscles as we take a pair of half-time questions for them to collaborate on in the feature we call Beat the Brains. By tradition, it's the reigning Brain of Britain champion who sets these questions in the final, meaning that David Stainer, who won here last year, has provided the questions for you to ponder today. David's questions have a common historical theme, as you'll see. See what you make of the first one. Which 19th century US president who distinguished himself as a soldier in the Mexican-American War was nicknamed Old Rough and Ready? Zachary Taylor. Zachary Taylor. Uh, is that the verdict of you all? Yeah. yeah. You're, you're pleased with that? Yes? Well, you're right. Zachary Taylor, originally a reluctant candidate of indeterminate political views, <laughs> and he became the 12th president but died 16 months after taking office. Well, here's David's second question then, you having polished off the first in double quick time. A 19th century US soldier, also noted for his exploits in the Mexican-American War, was nicknamed Old Fuss and Feathers. He lost out to Zachary Taylor as the Whig candidate in the 1848 presidential election and never did become president. Who was that? I got no idea what it is. I'm afraid we have drawn a blank. No guesses even, no, no. no. It was a really tough one, I must say. Uh, General Winfield Scott, Winfield, W-H-I-N. Really tough, but that's what champions do. Thank you, David. <coughs> Congratulations on beating the brains and, of course, on your very well-deserved victory last year. We hope you've enjoyed wallowing in your spell as, um, as Brain of Britain champion and that you'll enjoy finding out who your successor will be. We shall know that in an agonisingly few short minutes. In time-honoured Beat the Brain style, with no audience present at this year's final, from the archives, we offer you this vintage and highly nostalgic round of applause. <laughs> That, we trust, will return <clears throat> sooner or later. We'll be off air for many months now, of course, but let me remind you how you can get your ideas to us for consideration in a future series. You can email brainofbritain at bbc.co.uk or send your ideas via the Contact Us link on the Brain of Britain homepage. Or you can write to us on paper at Brain of Britain, BBC Doc House, Media City UK, Salford, M50, 2LH. The same contact details apply if you'd like to request an entry form for a future contest. And when the time comes for the next audition process to start, we'll send them out to everyone who's contacted us. Let's resume the final then. Fingers back on buttons, all of you, and it's back to you, Graham Anderson. In the Heights was the title of a musical which won a Tony Award in 2008 and which its creator had started writing while still at college. He became much more famous for a later project. Who was the writer of In the Heights? Sorry, I don't know. Okay. Yes, Michael Smith. Uh, Miranda. Lin-Manuel Miranda, yes, creator, of course, of the multi-award winning Hamilton. Graham Barker, during the lockdown in 2020, the BBC Philharmonic was challenged to perform various works in isolation. Here's a performance from Broadcasting House on Radio 4 
in which they played a popular theme incorporating whistling sent in by listeners. When we've heard it, can you name the composer of this work? It was the theme, of course, from The Great Escape, one of the most whistled of all modern tunes, I should think. When the world is mud luscious and when the world is puddle wonderful are phrases used in a poem by which 20th century American poet describing the season of spring. Hmm. E. e. Cummings? Well done, yes, it is E. Cummings. In just spring are the first words of the poem, to be precise, so the transition period between winter and spring seems to be what he means. Greta Garbo's first sound film, Anna Christie, was famously advertised with the slogan, Garbo Talks. But which of her later films was publicised as the film in which Garbo laughs? Ninochka. In 1939, correct answer. Based on her estimate of the length of time she had been alive, 30 Million Minutes was the title of which actress and comic's first ever solo stand-up show? Joan Rivers? Not Joan Rivers. Michael Smith? Maureen Lipman. No, could well have been, but wasn't. Uh, are you ready? Victoria Wood? No. Yes, Graham Anderson. Joyce Grenfell? No, a good round of ladies, but it was Dawn French. First performed in 2014. 30 million minutes, incidentally, add up to just over 57 years. Hugh Brady, the 1930s house in Pennsylvania known as Falling Water is one of the best known designs of which American architect? Frank Lloyd Wright. Yes, I was told by the curator of the house Wright built for himself in Chicago that a lot of his houses proved to be leaky. So perhaps calling one falling water was inevitable. What familiar word is usually used for a young walrus? Pup. No. Graham Anderson. Calf. Calf is the right one. Michael Smith. John F. Kennedy was the first Roman Catholic president of the United States. But the first Roman Catholic ever to serve as vice president is more recent still. Who was it? Biden? It was Joe Biden, yes. It feels almost like a trick question, but it's the truth. Vice President mm. to Barack mm. Obama. Played by Basil Radford and Norton Wayne, the cricket-mad characters of Charters and Caldicott first appeared in which Hitchcock film? Uh, Rebecca. No. Hugh Brady. Strangers on a Train. Not that. Uh, Graham Barker. The Lady Vanishes. That's the one, yes, and their comic turn was so successful that they turned up a couple of years later in the Carol Reed film Night Train to Munich. End of a round. Score was quite different. Now Michael Smith, three. Graham Anderson, five. Hugh Brady, eight. Graham Barker, 11. And the next round begins, of course, with Graham Anderson. In the Sherlock Holmes stories of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, what is Professor Moriarty's first name? James. Yes. The triptych entitled Three Studies for Figures at the Base of a Crucifixion, dating from 1944, is considered the breakthrough work of which artist? Sorry, I don't know. Okay. Hugh Brady. Bacon. Francis Bacon. Francis Bacon. Right answer. And Graham Barker's question. King Henry II of France, who was married to Catherine de' Medici, died in 1559 from an injury arising from what pastime? Quite common at the time among those of his class. Um, jousting. Jousting is right, yes. In 2018, Japan unveiled a bullet train themed around which cartoon character and multi-billion marketing sensation? Hmm. Sonic the Hedgehog? No. 
Hugh Brady knows. Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty. The pink and white train features Hello Kitty branding throughout on the seat covers, windows, flooring and so on. Can't imagine anything less restful. Uh, Hugh Brady now. Here's a clip of the French singer Edith Piaf with a question coming after you've heard it. C'est un air qui me montre du doigt Et je traîne après moi comme une drôle d'erreur Cet air qui sait tout par cœur Now your question is this. Which unconventional French artist, playwright and filmmaker died of a heart attack on the same day as Edith Piaf in 1963, supposedly as a result of the shock of hearing of her death? Jacques Taddy. No. Graham Barker. Jean Cocteau. Jean Cocteau, often thought of as a surrealist, but in fact he rejected any affi affiliation with that artistic movement. Michael Smith now, the Italian football club Sampdoria is based in which city? Genoa. Yes, or Genova as they have it. Its name combines two former clubs, San Pier d'Arenese and Andrea Doria. Who was the first British composer to be given a life peerage? Elgar? No. Graham Barker? Benjamin Britten. In June 1976, correct. The scores look like this now. Michael Smith, four. Graham Anderson, six. Hugh Brady, ten. Graham Barker, 14. And gentlemen, I have to warn you that this is the final round of the contest. So make your moves now. Graham Anderson, Dora Spenlow and Agnes Whitfield are the first and second wives respectively of which of Charles Dickens' title characters? Martin Chuzzlewit. No. Hugh Brady. David Copperfield. Yes. Graham Barker. Sphalerite, S-P-H-A-L, is the chief ore of which metal? Sphalerite. Zinc. Zinc is correct. Two sisters, Eglantine Jeb and Dorothy Buxton, launched which charity at a packed meeting in the Royal Albert Hall in May 1919? Save the Children. Yeah, it was Save the Children. Well done. The sisters were part of the Fight the Famine movement, which aimed to spread information about how Britain's blockade left children in cities such as Berlin and Vienna starving in the aftermath of the Great War. Eschatology is the Department of Theological Science concerned with what? Study of words? No. Michael Smith says... Uh, the, the four last things. Indeed, there are various ways of putting it. The end of the world, the four last things, the last judgment, heaven or hell, any of those. From the Greek, eschatos, meaning last. So literally, study of the last things. Uh, Hugh Brady, one of the most controversial paintings by Ingres is La Grande Odalisque, a nude dating from 1814 and on display in the Louvre. What originally was an odalisque? A harem? No. Can't give you that. Graham Anderson? A concubine? Yes, a concubine. In effect, a, a harem slave, but it's, it's the individual that we're after. Langhorn Odalisque was attacked by many critics for what was perceived to be a lack of anatomical realism, particularly in the long curve of the back. Too many vertebrae, people said. Michael Smith, time for some music for you now. And here's the operatic baritone, Roderick Williams, in a clip from Radio 4's Front Row earlier this year. Frustrated by the cancellation of theatre shows during lockdown, he took the opportunity to grab a backing track and perform down the phone. I'd like you just to name the opera this is from. It's all together now. Ducks. 
seductive eyes watch the drama unfold. In their love will be your prize, Toreador. Their love will be your prize, Toreador. The Marriage of Figaro. No. You, Brady. Carmen. Carmen, yes. And I'm reliably told that high note he hit was the highest ever reached by a baritone live on Radio 4, wearing red trousers. And that means we have come to the end of the 2020 final of Brain of Britain, with the scores as follows. Michael Smith, five points. Graham Anderson, seven. Hugh Brady, 12. Graham Barker, 16. So, in a situation that would normally see the theatre erupting in applause at this point, it's congratulations to Graham Barker, and after a tremendous performance in a very strange series of Brain of Britain, yours becomes the 66th name on the list of official champions, and it will also be engraved on the handsome silver trophy, which you get to take home with you today, and keep for life. In the interests of health, we won't hand it over personally today, but I think between us, those on the stage could muster a tiny round of applause for our champion. Well done. Well done, of course, to our other three finalists after a nail-biting contest. Thank you for bearing with all the pandemic restrictions and the changes of plan we've all been through this year. And the same goes for all 48 of our competitors this season. And we'd love to see you back again for another try at the title in years to come. Until the 2021 Brain of Britain tournament in happier and more certain times, thank you very much indeed for listening and goodbye.